What's the best the next step for a small business in Houston to figure out what they should be doing to protect themselves? Let's say they contact you. What is the first thing that you would do with them? So I would start talking to them about uh, their IT security needs. Uh, then we do an assessment with them and find out what their security posture currently looks like and what the gap is to getting it to a point that would be compliant uh, if they're in, under any kind of regulation that they need to be. Uh, but if they're just looking to bolster their security, then we would say, hey, here's the best practices for a company in your industry. Here's what we do for other clients, taking into effect their anti-spam, the security systems on their computers. And then, of course, hey, are you training your staff to, to be on the lookout for a lot of these scams and things that could potentially get into your network? And if they're not doing those kind of things, then we would implement a, a policy and procedure to start that up. So we're going to set up a training regimen that would go out monthly to warn the staff, hey, this kind of a threat exists. Here's what you can do. And, and here's the kind of the procedures that you need to outline within your business to stop it. So if you get a call from someone that seems to be the CEO of your company, what do you do with that? And, and the company needs to define that for themselves, how they want to react. What they did, what are they going to do in those particular circumstances? It's just simply hanging up the phone or is this going to be, oh, I need to get more information so I can contact law enforcement or I'm going to ignore it. So any of those types of things are, are going to be plausible, but we need to define what your company wants to do in these types of scenarios after we figure out where your security is at. Because if I can trick you into giving me your password or your bank account information, now I've got a lot more information that I can go and, and do whatever I'm going to do from a damage point of view. So your traditional cybersecurity plan just got elevated thanks to these AI scams and deep fake threats. You really have to add that component to it too. Absolutely. And there's other ways from a video point of view. If you've ever watched or looked at any AI video, you can see a lot of mistakes that are made. AI is not currently perfect and it's getting better. So this may not apply in, in the next couple of years. But right now you can look for just things that look weird. There's uh, on OpenAI's website, they have a really cool platform called Sora. And, and one of the videos they show, they have a woman walking down the street. But if it, as you look at it, as she turns her head, all of a sudden she has a bump on the on her head that wasn't there just a few seconds ago. In another video, they have a cat just pawing at their owner. And in that, all of a sudden there's now three arms. And so paying attention to just those little tiny details to say, oh, they've got more fingers than they really need, or the, the eye color changes, or the texture of the skin just looks fake or weird. Any of those kind of things you can look at, and that'll help you from a, from a, a video point of view. Audio is going to be a little bit tougher, but you can look at the style in which the person is talking, the, the accent that they use, all those types of things to, to identify. Does it sound a little more robotic, or does it even, uh, the, the grammar that they use, is it typical for that person? Those kind of things you can identify from a training point of view. But again, it's going to be just paying attention and being on top of those kind of things. One of the things I love about the way your company does these the training for employees is you will actually send out things that you know are fake and you want to see how employees react so you can actually help them get trained on it. And that's a wonderful approach because you're doing it uh, to make sure people understand what needs to happen. And at the same time, you're not actually attacking them. It's almost like a white hat way of doing it. Absolutely. You got to do, you know, tests just because in school, just because you, you sat there and listened to the lecture doesn't mean that you absorbed all that content. And at the end, you need to test your understanding and verify that you know what's going on so that later on when you're not in that safe environment and that scenario happens to you, you, you know how to react to it when hopefully it's not in a negative way. So the last thing a small business wants in Houston is to be front page news about how they got hacked or attacked using AI, an AI scammer or deep fake. Greg, what's the best way for a company to reach out to you and get started with the process to make sure that they are ready for what's coming down the road, which is going to be better and better fakes? They can visit our website at braintech.com. That's B-R-A-I-N-T-E-K.com. Or they can just give us a call, 281-367-8253. And what they want to do is when they call or, or submit a web form, talk about having us do a cybersecurity uh, assessment for their company, and then to just sit down and talk to them about how they're doing different things within their business from a security point of view, a processes point of view, to see if there's any gaps or holes that they need to be aware of. They can train themselves or staff, make, make some changes internally to their processes and procedures, and, and of course, implement some training for everybody. 